everyone, it's Heather Moxie and welcome to my channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can refresh a secondhand or dated piece of furniture with a simple DIY. Large furniture items like couches often come with removable furniture feet or legs, making them very easy to change out or update in the future. A few years back, my boyfriend and I received this couch secondhand from his parents. The existing couch feet had a cherry finish and were in great shape, so I decided it was time to make this couch ours and give it a fresh update. This project is great for any type of paint or finish, but I'll be showing you how to DIY custom chalkboard paint for a rustic finish. For supplies you will need furniture feet, sanding paper or block, plaster of Paris and a tablespoon, a one quart paint can, paint brushes, sample pot of paint and a paint stick, and polyacrylic and matte finish. The first thing you'll need to do is remove the existing furniture feet. Depending on your couch or chair, you may want to keep existing screws together and separated by furniture piece or by specific furniture feet. I had three main furniture items and separated screws and furniture feet in plastic bags. This step is definitely not necessary, but will keep everything in one place until you're ready to reattach. Don't forget to mark any unusual screws and the spots they came from. Our couch had mostly the same size screws, but we noticed two out of the four spots had shorter screws. We also marked any oddly placed screws with a sharpie and continued. This is important to remember so you don't damage anything when you go to put everything back. Moving on to the most time consuming part of this DIY, prepping the furniture feet. The main goal of this step is to remove as much of the finish or shine on the furniture feet as possible. There's no need to go down to bare wood, so that's why you can stick with a sanding block or piece of sanding paper. I used a rough grit to really knock down the finish until I was happy with the result. This is also another reason I decided not to go with regular paint. Prep time is very minimal since chalkboard paint easily sticks to almost any surface. The only difficult part is doing this for multiple furniture feet over and over again. For your chalkboard paint, you will need to combine 2 tablespoons plaster of Paris and 1 tablespoon of water. After mixing those, you can then add 1 cup of paint. pot of paint that I used came in at just under a cup but it didn't seem to affect the recipe so it's entirely up to you. You can also skip purchasing a paint can and mix the ingredients directly into the sample pot of paint. However, I found having the paint can made it much easier and totally worth it. I was able to mix thoroughly and without worrying about spilling anything. I also like that I'll be able to save and store this paint for future use. I happen to find this chalkboard paint recipe through Pinterest. It's originally from Jamie and her blog Anderson and Grant. I will link her blog post down below along with the recipe for future reference. Once your chalkboard paint is ready and the furniture feet are free of any sanding dust, you can finally begin painting. One of the best things I've heard about chalkboard finished paint is that it is very easy to work with and that is definitely true. There's no real method to it and I really like that it has a thick texture. This allows brush strokes to show and gives every layer a unique touch. I painted just enough to cover what would be seen and it was really nice not to have to worry about being delicate or worry about the traditional details when painting. A little goes a long way and I actually found myself pulling paint from a previous piece to paint the next instead of dipping my brush again. Keep in mind that chalkboard paint dries very quickly so if you go over a piece after it's had even a minute to dry you may have to rework any weird brush strokes that makes. I wasn't sure how many coats I would need, but I decided to go with two even layers of paint. I definitely could have stopped at one coat of paint, but I wanted a little more coverage over the cherry wood undertones. Once the paint dried, I went back with my sanding block and paper and went for the edges of each piece. This step will be easier if you decide to only do one coat of paint. You'll have less paint to cut through and getting to that aged finish will happen faster. This step is also completely optional, but I love distressing the finish on almost all of my projects. I especially want to give the furniture feet a little more character instead of leaving them looking freshly painted. A couch that has a lot of character like ours deserves furniture feet to match. After 
finishing up each piece, be sure to remove any leftover dirt before sealing your project. Staying in the style of the chalkboard paint, I used Minwax Polyacrylic in a matte finish instead of a semi-gloss. Whenever you're working with a white paint, I highly recommend to stay away from polyurethanes. They can discolor your project, turning white paint into a dingy yellow. The polyacrylic will seal in the layers of paint without taking away from the aged or worn-in finish I'm looking for. I left the furniture feet to dry for the day before I reattached them, making sure to match any screws to specific areas. And just like that, our secondhand couch got a refreshing makeover. I'm so happy with how this project came out and I'm honestly not sure why I didn't do it sooner. It's such an easy DIY and it's a small change, but once everything came together, I could not believe the difference it made. Since our couch was a hand-me-down, we only paid for the cost of making the chalkboard paint. Coming in at just over $30, I am much happier with this DIY than any of the alternatives. If you're interested in doing this DIY or the recipe for the chalkboard paint, check out the description box below for any links and supply lists. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section and don't forget to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Heather Moxie DIY, where you can get glimpses of my upcoming projects. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video, and as always, I will see you guys next time. Bye!